That was a very nice offense, defense, and special teams win. The contributions from all three were superior. You know, the drops obviously, you know, hurt, hurt big time. You know, we, we, we got to get, get an answer for that. Okay, Kirk, we see you. Kirk Cousins rallying the Redskins to victory. Dez still thinks the Cowboys will run the East, but the Giants stand alone on top of the division after beating the Cowboys 27-20. to The Giants hold a one-game lead in the loss column on the rest of the division. We welcome Eric Allen to the show. Now you know a thing or two about the NFC East. A little bit, a little bit. I can't wait for this. <laughs> Good to see you, as always. Thanks for yeah. being with us. You know, e every week, it's a new twist. A little, a little twist, twist. Right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. the season's like that. I'm in the league is like that. No better know. soap opera than yeah. the NFL, right? It is. It is a soap opera right now. Is it the Giants division now? No, it's not. No, it's not. First of all, let's get it put on the table. Okay. It's a terrible division, okay? Not I'll very good football. That. Offense yeah. is all over the place. Defense is all over the place. So basically, they're fighting mm -hmm. between themselves yeah, to find stopping. out who's going to represent the NFC East. There's not going to be no two teams. And this could be a big argument for maybe reshuffling the playoffs because I believe that the winner of the East is not going to be a very good team, maybe 9-7, and 8-8, and eight, whatever. Mm -hmm. But still, when you look at head-to-head, -head, what's going on down in Dallas, no offense, not being able to, to really make a big move. The New Orleans loss was huge because that was giving them an opportunity to at least salvage a win before the big guns came back. You saw the Giants and Eagles matchup. It wasn't even close. The Eagles defense really played well. That was their beginning. They were, that was their opening up party up front, did an outstanding job of dominating the Giants uh, offensive line. Great pressure on the quarterback. Defense really played well. Got a great dose from the running game. Threw early, ran late. It was a perfect scenario for this football team. And then they go to Carolina and basically lay a dud. And that shows me that this division, these teams of division, are not going to be able to compete with any of their other winners in the West, the South, wherever. So the Eagles, what they need to concentrate on is being able to run the football with Ryan Matthews, yeah. okay, and find a way to get the big play players to make big plays. And I understand that, you know what, you gave away Deshaun Jackson. Who are you gave the away big Sean, play players? And that's what's going on. Ryan Matthews is the biggest play of the day. They need to find a way to continue because he's a better fit at this point yes. of the season. Agreed. Running, running back, uh, as far as a running back coming out the backfield, catching passes, and running the football. He's a better fit. He's yep. a more shifty going side to side because the offensive line is banged up. That's the same guy who was up in Buffalo. Okay. So, again, you have a player in DeMarco Murray who's a, a fantastic football player, not a, great foot for this foot, not a great fit for this football team, and your quarterback throwing the ball 46 times and you can't have one touchdown from receiver. I mean, this, this is not the Eagles football team that Pat Shermer and, and Chip Kelly told us it was going to be about. It was going to be about big plays, explosive plays. All those explosive players in the receiver spots, they're all gone right now. So you have to concentrate on defense and running the football, which we haven't seen in the last three years of Chip Kelly. He's going to have to find a way to be versatile and run the football more effectively at 177 yards and rely on this defense to make big plays. Stephen A. Well, listen, I don't think that anybody can say that <clears throat> The, the NFC East belongs to anybody. I mean, the reality of the situation is, is that based on what we've seen from the Giants thus far, the inconsistency of the Redskins, which, by the way, Kirk Cousins got a lot of nerves yelling, yelling into the camera. I mean, <laughs> good Lord have mercy. Uh, really? Really? You? I guess that I guess that everybody's entitled to their moment because he certainly doesn't have many of them. But kudos to him. But I think that when we see the NFC East, I think that Skip's absolutely right when he points out how had Romo and Des Bryant been healthy, there's no reason to believe or doubt that the Cowboys would be running away with this division because the level of mediocrity that has sifted through this division is something to be alarmed by. With the Giants, however, I do believe that that's primarily about their injuries and the absence of personnel on, on in, in certain positions. I mean, Victor Cruz, Prince of Mucamora, and others being out, I think, affects the Giants significantly. In the case of the Redskins, 
and the Philadelphia Eagles, I just think you have mediocrity. For the Redskins, it's on the offensive side of the ball because they don't have a quarterback who's consistent. For every week that he wins you a game, he throws interceptions the next two to three weeks, okay? In the case of the Philadelphia Eagles, we have Boy Genius and Chip Kelly, uh, whose offense has been anything but because of the personnel he handpicked to lead that offense. So I think in the case of Philadelphia and the Redskins, you have mediocrity on the offensive side of the ball, although I think it's an easier fix for the Philadelphia Eagles than it is for the Washington Redskins, whereas in the case of the Giants, it's primarily due to injury. So we're really not going to know what this division is made up of until Romo and Dez get back. But by that time, Victor Cruz and Prince of Mucamara should be back. And the combination of, of, of some of the other guys injured for the Giants, I think it'll come down to the Giants and the Cowboys, assuming both are healthy at the same time. I'll buy that. Yet, my takeaway from last night was, as a Cowboy fan, as disappointed or devastated as I was by the loss, because it was a giveaway loss, the Giants just aren't very good to me. That's a flawed football team. And then I got to sit and watch your old team, the Eagles. They're not a real good football team. Right. Pretty mediocre, as you suggest. Sam Bradford's not that guy. He's not physically and mentally tough enough, after all the injuries and the, the, the punishment that he's taken, to be that guy to run your team, your offense, and take it to the promised land. In fact, I must admit, I feared Mark Sanchez last year more than I fear Sam Badford right now. Yeah. I just do. I, and, and we know what the, the ultimate accident waiting to happen to me is Mark Sanchez. Mm -hmm. But he also is, he's a talented young man. Yeah. He can throw it. He can run it. They started running the read option with him last year at Dallas. They ran it eight times. And I think he had a bunch of, you know, crucial third down yardage. So, again, I don't fear Sam Bradford. I, I still don't fear Eli and company, even, even though Eli should be the best quarterback in the division. Yeah. And yet, my Cowboys last night found something. Darren McFadden looked like Arkansas Ooh, Darren McFadden. Man. I got to yeah. tell you, he did. He did. He, did. he looked like that he college guy, all right? over them. Wow. And so they have 233 total yards rushing, mm -hmm. and he gets 152 of them. Is that right? 150, yeah, 152 on 29 carries. And, and I'm thinking... If, if my Cowboys still just won one game back in the loss column uh -huh. in the East, if they could just figure out a way to win two of the next three, you get two home games, your Eagles, uh, oh, let's go Seattle, then your Eagles, yep. after they're coming off a bye, and then they go to Tampa. If they could win one home game and win at Tampa and get Romo back, I, I think they'd be back in business. Still in the mix, still in the okay? mix. I, and I, I believe the Cowboys, obviously, when the guys are healthy, tremendous talent and we talked about this early uh, in the season they would be the favorite if they were all healthy but they're not all healthy and I don't see the big plays just like the Eagles and I, I agree with you wholeheartedly I think Mark Sanchez would be the key to this team because now you can introduce the read option you could and have a quarterback again who's able to run and get outside the pocket with him and Ryan Matthews in the backfield I think that takes this team not to the top, but I think it takes them to an opportunity it, it to I be able agree. to win the East without a healthy Dallas Cowboys football yep. team. But see, Chip Kelly would have to swallow considerable oh, yeah, pride he, yes, to go yeah. to Mark Sanchez. He, he, won, he won time possession yesterday. That's the first time we said that in a long time, too. Yeah. So, well, again, hopefully he's changing a little bit. I don't know if it would have. Are y'all saying that it would take considerable pride for Chip Kelly to make the switch from Demarco Murray to Ryan Matthews? No, no, See, no. Because Mark, I, the quarterback situation. I, I think that oh, would the quarterback take, situation. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, it would. It would. I, I, I'll admit that. But at the same time, you know, again, I can't judge. I, I, Sam Bradford is not that impressive to me. Right. I do get that, but I can't fault him as much as Skip does. Because I'm seeing so many dropped passes on a part of the Eagles. Yeah, you do, but I it's, mean, I, you're in I'm Philly. Just, you're just, playing no, in Philadelphia. No, no. You need a certain it factor it, it, to play in no, Philadelphia. No, no, I know that. Yeah. And you know no, that. No, no, no. We agree. We agree. We agree they don't have that in, in Sam Bradford, guys. Right. But what I'm saying is, is that an it factor is not going to, to, to make Jordan Matthews catch passes that he should be catching. Right. You're I supposed to catch those passes. I, I agree you, with you, that. You're just supposed to do that. And but so if you're able to run the read option, 
that yep. puts That's another fair. wrinkle in your offense it where does. you're not concerned That's about fair. Ryan That's Matthews fair. as much. But you can't but you can't drop passes. You can't yeah, drop yeah, passes. You're right. You're right. You gotta catch him. Miles yeah. Austin can't drop passes. Can't you're drop lucky him. to still be in the league. You can't drop passes. Right. You gotta catch the passes. They need help in that receiving court. Listen, this division's always up for grabs. The last time they've had repeat champs was your Eagles back in 01 through 04. Mm. Eric, you're sticking with us? Yes, I am. It was your time, wasn't it? Or were you in well, I was, I was, a, well, I was on the other coast back then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Everyone is Gotta talking about in. Greg Hardy's <laughs> sideline incident with Des Bryant. The Cowboys are saying everything is fine, but should Jerry Jones do something about Hardy's outburst? We'll get into that coming up. Do you? This is a witch hunt. I'm sick to death, dead wrong. The odds are in your favor. I know you don't. Cut high and dry. It's unbelievable. Tell me you can't close that deal. I won the fight. You like that? You like that? That was a very nice offense, defense, and special teams win. The contributions from all three were superior. You know, the drops. Obviously, you know, hurt, hurt big time. You know, we we, we got to get we gotta get an answer for that. Okay, Kirk, we see you. Kirk Cousins rallying the Redskins to victory. Dez still thinks the Cowboys will run the East, but the Giants stand alone on top of the division after beating the Cowboys 27 to 20. The Giants hold a one-game lead in the loss column on the rest of the division. We welcome Eric Allen to the show. Now you know a thing or two about the NFC East. A little bit, a little bit. I can't wait for this. <laughs> Good to see you, as always. Thanks for yeah. being with us. You know, e every week, it's a new twist. A little, twist little twist, right? yeah, yeah. Because the season's like that. Right. In the league is like that. No better know. soap opera than the yeah. NFL, right? It is. It is a soap opera right now. Is it the Giants division now? No, it's not. No, it's not. First of all, let's get it put on the table. Okay. It's a terrible division, okay? Not uh, very I'll good football. That. Offense yeah. is all over the place. Defense is all over the place. So basically, they're fighting mm -hmm. between themselves yeah, to find stopping. out who's going to represent the NFC East. There's not going to be no two teams. And this could be a big argument for maybe reshuffling the playoffs because I believe that the winner of the East is not going to be a very good team, maybe 9-7, and 8-8, and, eight and eight, whatever. Mm -hmm. But still, when you look at head-to-head, -head, what's going on down in Dallas, no offense, not being able to, to really make a big move, the New Orleans loss was huge because that was giving them an opportunity to at least salvage a win before the big guns came back. You saw the Giants and Eagles matchup. It wasn't even close. The Eagles defense really played well. That was their beginning. They were, that was their opening up party up front, did an outstanding job of dominating the Giants' uh, offensive line. Great pressure on the quarterback. Defense really played well. Got a great dose from the running game. Threw early, ran late. It was a perfect scenario for this football team. And then they go to Carolina and basically lay a dud. And that shows me that this division, these teams' division, are not going to be able to compete with any of their other winners in the West, the South, wherever. So the Eagles, what they need to concentrate on is being able to run the football with Ryan Matthews, yeah. okay, and find a way to get the big play players to make big plays. And I understand that. You know what? You gave away Deshaun Jackson. Who are you gave the away big Deshaun, play players? And that's what's going on. Ryan Matthews at the biggest play of the day. They need to find a way to continue because he's a better fit at this point yes. of the season. Agreed. Running, running back, uh, as far as a running back coming out the backfield, catching passes, and running the football. He's a better fit. He's yep. a more shifty going side to side because the offensive line is banged up. That's the same guy who was up in Buffalo. Okay. So, again, you have a player in DeMarco Murray who's a, a fantastic football player, not a, great foot for this fo not a great fit for this football team, and your quarterback throwing the ball 46 times and you can't have one touchdown from receiver? I mean, this, this is not the Eagles football team that Pat Shermer and, and Chip Kelly told us it was going to be about. It was going to be about big plays, explosive plays. All those explosive players in the receiver spots, they're all gone right now. So you have to concentrate on defense and running the football, which we haven't seen in the last three years of Chip Kelly. He's going to have to find a way to be versatile and run the football more effectively at 177 yards and rely on this defense to make big plays. Stephen A. Well, listen, I don't think that anybody can say that <clears throat> The, the NFC East belongs to anybody. I mean, the reality of the situation is, is that based on what we've seen from the Giants thus far, the inconsistency of the Redskins, which, by the way, Kirk Cousins got a lot of nerves yelling into the camera. I mean, good 